98 degrees <laughs> on this porch. Wow. <laughs> I think that when we are given the opportunity to remove most of the distractions that make us do things or that we have allowed into our lives to force us into acting in a certain way, whether it be our schedule or our kids or our lifestyle or our telephones or any other technological thing, whether it be texting or beepers, <laughs> even a, I'd say a servant, but we don't have servants, but a, an assistant or say a business partner or somebody that can come over and knock on your door. Whenever we allow those to tug and pull at us, then that's really not being still, is it? It's not getting alone with God. It's not taking the time to set aside for yourself a quiet place to be alone and to be calm and to be still. They say that in American culture we don't have the abilities that some of the European cultures have or some of the Middle Eastern cultures have or the Eastern cultures in the idea of meditation because sometimes some of the Christians have gotten carried away about thinking that meditation is Oh my God, you know, it's some kind of cult thing, you know, and it's compromise. You know, it's not. <laughs> Sorry, wrong. <laughs> it comes from Scripture. Meditate on the Word, you know. Literally, you are required, if you read the Scriptures, to come away with God to a place that would be quiet and still before you so that you would not sit around going, Krishna, Krishna, Hare Krishna, or, you know, um, or losing your mind, but rather you would be stilling your soul and calming your spirit to come to a place of listening to what God would say. I hope that you learn to meditate on the Word. in utmost sanctification. This is the will of God, even your sanctification. 1 Thessalonians 4.3 The death side. In sanctification, God has to deal with us on the death side as well as on the life side. Many of us spend so much time in the place of death that we get sepulchral. Sepulchral. <laughs> sepulchral. Boy, is that a tongue twister. We get grave-like. There is always a battle royal for sanctification. There is always a fierce battle before sanctification. Always something that tugs with resentment against the demands of Jesus Christ. Immediately the Spirit of God begins to show us what sanctification means and the struggle begins. If any man come to me and hate not his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Oops. Uh-oh one of those. The Spirit of God, in the process of sanctification, will strip me until I am nothing but myself. That is the place of death. Am I willing to be myself and nothing more? No friends, no father, no brother, no mother, no self-interest, simply ready for death? That is the condition of sanctification. No wonder Jesus said, I came not to send peace, but a sword. That is where the battle comes and where so many of us faint. We refuse to be identified with the death of Jesus on this point. But, 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 but it's so stern, it, could, it can't be meaning me. He paid the price. I don't have to do it, we say. He cannot wish me to do that. Our Lord is stern, and he does wish us to do that. Am I willing to reduce myself simply to me, alone with God? Determinedly to strip myself of all my friends and all of what they think of me, of all I think of myself, and to hand that simple, naked self over to God? Immediately I am. 
He will sanctify me wholly, and my life will be free from the earnestness in connection with everything but God. Nothing will have a tie to pull you back in. When I pray, Lord, show me what sanctification means for me. He will show me. It means being made one with Jesus. Sanctification is not something Jesus Christ puts into me. It is himself in me. It's a pretty heavy thing to realize. There is such a thing as Christian possession. You are God's possession. He owns you. You gave your life to him. You surrendered the throne of your life, the self-will, the self-determination, the rights that you have to yourself, to God. If you haven't, you aren't born again. You may feel like you have salvation, but the reality is, Jesus may say, why did you not do the things I said if you call me Lord, Lord? And why would you call him Lord if you have not given him your life? Sanctification is a fancy word. It simply means set apart for a specific purpose. And God has designed it so that you would be set apart for a specific purpose. But somewhere along the way, people have set salvation as a separate issue from sanctification. You're no longer set apart for a specific purpose, but you got saved so you could go do your own thing and declare it unto God as being His thing for you. You said, oh, but I got saved and then I had to find out my gift, so I'm gifting and there's gifting this and gifting that, and I'm gifted in this and I'm gifted in that. But did you die, literally, to all that owns you and possesses you and then ask for not your will but God's will be done? That is sanctification. If you would make Jesus Lord, then you must give up everything else you own. Jesus did not mince words with that. In the reality of all that he said, when he declared, I came not to bring peace but a sword, he also said, he that does not hate his own life is not worthy to be called my disciple. Are you willing to give up everything that you own right now to possess Jesus? That is what he's asking. That is what sanctification means.